in your mercy to our prayers that the gates of paradise may be opened to your servant and that we who are left may console one another with words of faith. The Lord giveth and the Lord hath taken away. <coughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. In spite of this tragic accident, in death as in life, the spirit of Sabrina Longworth will be with us always. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> any further floral tributes, you know, you may bring them now. I can't believe it. Richard is actually giving me roses. I bet he's still them off a grave on his way in. Probably his mother's. Oh. to see her sister walking here. If it's one that did, it come to life. Strength of the hope of resurrection, in whose bodies are subject to decay, grant, we pray, that your servant may rest at peace in this grave until that day when you, the resurrection and the life, enrich her with life made new. May she, in the light of your countenance, behold eternal light in heaven, you who live and reign forever. Amen. Oh, I'm so sorry. We never should have done it. Oh, come on, Mom. I can't stand that, Mrs. Wadsworth. Honey, this is not a discussion of any school. Yeah. Move over, Mom. I'm going to be late. Leave the cat. Mark, Mark, what are you doing, Mark? Honest to God, Mark. Penny, will you please turn down the television? It's driving me crazy. I can't even hear myself think. Now, would you talk to her about school? Mm -hmm. Would you talk to her about school? What? Did you hear anything I said? He never hears anything you say. You know, I still can't believe this. Calling me the uh, Christopher Columbus of genetic research. <laughs> well, aren't you? Oh, no, honey, I'm just one of the crew. But maybe they're trying to tell me something. Christopher Columbus didn't know where he was going either. Thank you very much. Brad, do yeah, you think yeah. you could... Do me a favor and drive the carpool today. I've got a thousand things to do and I'm running late. Right no, I can't. I have an eight o'clock. Then I have to uh, start preparing for a seminar. Could you at least maybe try to help to get the kids ready? Right. Okay, kids, let's go. Come on. Up. You know why Finish it up. Let's go. Well, you got to. It's carpool time. Come on. I know nobody in this family needs an education, but let's give it a try, huh? March. March. Come on, Mark. It was after midnight, again. Well, like I said, I didn't mean to work so late, but I guess that's what research is, working late. And what am I supposed to do while you read your own publicity? Since this is a partnership here, I thought we were working we? for this kind of... I'm not a part of this anymore. It's just you, you and your career. All I do is play mother and father and... Go to work at the student store. I told you last night, you know, it's fine with me if you quit the damn job. I can't. Why not? Because we need the money. If you two are finished fighting, we'd better leave now. 
We're not fighting, Mark. We're just talking things over. Is that what you were doing last night, too? Mark. It's not our fault if we heard you. Well, there's Harold. He's driving me in. Staff, we're just victims of suburbia. Mwah. Take it easy. Have a good day, school. What? You come to soccer practice today, four o'clock? I'll try my best. You've been saying that for a year. Well, at least I'm consistent. Take it easy, girls. You're the only one who understands, aren't you, Mr. Cat? That's right. I'm in one of his classes. Rita McMillan. You're a lucky woman. They get younger and prettier every day, don't they? Or maybe I just get older and flabbier. <laughs> oh, come on, Stephanie. Come on. Let's go have lunch. Okay. Grant student. She was very pretty, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure my professorial husband wouldn't mind tutoring her. Stephanie, you've got to stop worrying about Grant. I'm telling you, they all go through the same period where they need to prove they still have it. It's male menopause. And believe me, it happens to men a lot quicker than to women. About the time their voices change. Oh, it's just not fair, is it, Helen? Man gets gray, he gets lines in his face, and everyone just says he's distinguished looking. Yeah. And we're just over the hill. I'm trying to hold it together. I tell you, I'm really trying, Helen. But sometimes I just feel like I'm going to crack. It's okay, honey. I hate being like this. I know, I understand. Do you? What can I do for you, ladies? Grow old. <laughs> I'm at my wit's end with you. What am I going to do with you, Mark? I've talked to you over and over again about taking things that aren't yours. Now look at this tape recorder. It's clearly Mark's school property, Mark. Big deal. <sighs> I don't understand you. We try to give you everything. Sure, everything. You are grounded. No more soccer. Mom! And no more movies. But not I'm not there. still talking to you, young man. You stay right here. I'll be right back. Don't hurry. Hello? Steph, did I catch you at a bad time? Brady? How is it I always seem to know when you're going to call me? How are you? Where are you? I'm in London. Having another boring champagne reception. <laughs> what are you doing? Contemplating suicide. What? Well, I tell you, sometimes I think you're really lucky not to have kids. Oh, are you kidding? You're the lucky one. I mean it. I'm more than just a little jealous of you. Me? You're jealous of me? Sometimes. But listen to me. Can I tear you away from it all? What are you talking about? How would you like to come to Venice? Venice? Venice, California, or Venice, Venice? The real thing. There's this friend of mine, Princess Alessandra. She's generous, she's kind, she's lovely. And filthy rich, you say in your tongue, dear. <laughs> and she's filthy rich, she says. But she's much more than that. She's really wonderful. And she has this fabulous palazzo in Venice. And she's dying to give us a birthday party. That's so soon. The wonderful thing about the whole thing is that it's carnival time in Venice, and everybody walks around in medieval costumes. What do you think? 
Sounds wonderful. But I just, I can't. I can't. I've already bought you an airplane ticket. You can pick it up at the airport. Greenie, you don't have to pay for my airplane ticket. I know what a professor's salary is like. Now, come on, Steph. We haven't spent a birthday together in years. Hmm? I, I just don't see how I can. Grant's working on a new research project, and he's working night and day. I can't just go dump the kids on him and go. It's only for a couple of days. Out of a whole lifetime. I've always wanted to see Venice. Mm. You'll love it. It's gorgeous. Oh. I, I gotta think about it. Can I call you back? Only if the answer is yes. I'll call you back. <laughs> bye. <gasps> All right, bye. What did she say? She's worried about her husband. Really? I never worry about mine. Of course, he died three years ago. Mm. <laughs> Let me show you this. My friends have agreed to pay cash. Oh, good. I guess be sure they live up to the rest of the terms, because if they don't, could get messy. First class merchandise? Guaranteed. It's coming from Italy. Reliable as holy water. Lovely bars, isn't it? Is it frightfully expensive? Oh, yes. But I know you'll want it. <laughs> How much? 30,000 pounds. But this absolutely useless piece of beauty. That's what I was. Once. Oh, I'll take it. I knew you would. <laughs> Brian, darling, would you be very careful about packing this beautiful vase for Lady Jason? Oh, dear. It is such a lovely vase. Mm. You know, I really feel as if I'm selling my only child. Which, of course, I would, if the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the chair. Into the office. Hmm? Into the office. <laughs> Lovely party. Hmm. Oh, Richard, I am so bored with the art world and the people that I could scream. Save your screaming for later, though. It's been a very tedious Just the week, two of a quiet evening. Hmm? Well, not too quiet. You're very quiet tonight. That's because I have nothing to say. I think I need some air. What do you think you're doing? Breathing. Don't wear yourself up. Yet. Oh, hello, Mrs. Thurkel. Oh, sorry, madam, I didn't expect you so early. Evening, Mr. Blackwell. Evening, Mrs. Thurkel. That'll be all for tonight. Madam? Thank you, Mrs. Thurkel. Good night, then. Oh. Uh, Richard. Do you mind very much? I just don't feel like it tonight. It's been a long day and an even longer year. Well, having headaches wasn't part of the deal when I set you up. The gallery was a very good investment for you, Richard, and you do get your fair share. Once a week is hardly fair. Don't be vulgar. <laughs> As I recall, there are times when you prefer it that way, dear one. Not tonight. Tomorrow I'm leaving for New York, a whole month. I deserve a proper goodbye. Richard, uh, well, what would you say if I bought you out of the gallery? I'll pay you back every penny. This house, too. Hmm? The rolls. These pretty little numbers. It's been a long time since you had to do with that, Sabrina. I like you, Richard. I like you a lot. 
And sometimes I even get pleasure from sleeping with you. A great deal of pleasure. Thank you. But you don't own me. Nobody owns me. No matter how much they've invested. Well, aren't you the lady of the manor? You should have explained that to me before you took my money. Even the girls in Soho do that much love. I'm afraid it's time for you to go. Not yet, thank you. I haven't collected the rent. Oh, you bastard! DNA containing a growth gene was injected into one of the mother's eggs. When they were born, six of her brood remained normal. But good old Goliath here oh, grew to be this size. I'm afraid none of his old clothes will fit him anymore. <laughs> we changed the message delivered by the double helix that makes up the genetic instructions. But our research has just barely scratched the surface. Breaking through these barriers is a very slow process. And it had gotten to the point where Professor Adams and I felt that we needed help. Am I right, Harold? All the help we can get. That's right. So, I invited a gentleman to join us from the Moscow Institute of Science, who has become world-renowned for his uh, genetic research. Professor Dmitry Skolnikov. Good, my God. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Roberts. This breaking through these barriers, I do not make long. Grant Roberts, he's the one does most of this breaking. So when he invites me to join him, such an honor I cannot refuse. I think maybe you have never heard about the Moscow Institute. We don't play Notre Dame already. Notre Dame. <laughs> but other places we make progress. If DNA can make this Goliath grow so big, is it possible that it can stop cancer cells from growing at all? So soon we find this out. So soon more lives we save. It is a race against time. No country, I tell you. No nation can afford to boycott this race. It is the human race. Oh. Gary, any calls? No, it's been quiet. Except for Rita McMillan. She's in your office. Rita? What for? She insisted you told her to wait for you there after class today. I never told her that. Hello, Professor. I didn't think you'd mind if I dropped in for a few minutes to discuss my grades. Rita, I've got a lot of work to do now. You can call and make an appointment, like all the other students. Uh, but please, get out. All the way out? Yes, of course, all the way out. If you insist. Mm -hmm. I won't graduate. And I have to graduate. I'll do anything to graduate. How about studying? How about this? Don't. Don't you want me? I don't want you kicked out of school. And me along with you. Get dressed. And, uh, just get out, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know why I did it. My parents say for years to send me to college. And I must graduate. For them. Rita, I'm very sorry about your parents, but I'm sure they'd like you to have an education. Not just a piece of paper. But some of the girls told me. No, well, not, you know, in this department. But in some. Mm -hmm. Well, their professors are very friendly. Uh -huh. So I thought maybe you. 
You know what I mean. Oh, Rita, you're a bright girl. You don't need to sell yourself to get ahead. Believe me, in the long run, it's your brain that counts, not your horizontal ability. If you knew what you were throwing away, you'd kill yourself. Rita, and if you'd put as much effort into your studies as you do into these little performances, you would be Phi Beta Kappa with Oak Leaf Cluster. Stephanie? Grant? Oh, Steph, I'm home. I wasn't expecting you for dinner. I finished early. Uh, I tried to call you, but the line was busy. I have a little surprise for you. I want you to meet... D D Dimitri, come in. What? It's Professor Skulnikov, my wife. Hello. Uh, oh, hello. I, I'm sorry, I'm so un unprepared. Uh, don't worry, madame, you look charming. I invited Jimmy for dinner. Dinner? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's what I was calling about. I'm sure we'll manage. Yeah, perhaps another night with more No, 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 Stephanie's a wizard. She just stretches things out a little bit, right? <laughs> sure. No, it's no problem. Great. Great. You see, can I pour you a drink? Yeah. Come in here. Uh, Grant, could I have a word with you? Mm -hmm. Right there. You see, there's the bar, and there's a large bottle of vodka. Oh, vodka, wonderful. Oh, before you get too excited, ours comes from Puerto Rico. Oh, you see, today Puerto Rico, tomorrow, the well. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll be right there, Jimmy. Boy, your timing is just great. I can't seem to do anything right with you these days, can I? Neither can your son. What does that mean? That means that he's stealing again. And you've got to find some time to talk to him. It's serious Stephanie, can you please to... try not to get hysterical tonight while we have a guest in the house, all right? I will talk to Mark. All right. Fine. Billy! Nice to have met you, Mr. Professor. Come in. Come in. Lesson one, go to bed with Professor Grant Roberts. How can you believe in this? I don't know what to believe anymore. Once I even believed you loved me. I do love you. How much money we have in the bank? Eight hundred and twenty dollars. Right. And we need new rugs and a new car. And you know how long it's been since we had a vacation together? Do I have to remind you again about a professor's salary? No, you don't have to explain. But you could take that job at Marlin Chemical. Do you know how much they pay to have you? Right, and spend the rest of my life analyzing lipstick. It's not exactly my field. Except after class. I've told you there's nothing to that. Steph. Look, I've heard that Chancellor Webster might be asking me to head up to the research center. If he does that, if, it could mean a lot more money. Is that, uh, just the money? It's me. Maybe it's us. Maybe we need some time to be away from each other so we can get back to the way we were. I just don't know what I'm doing here anymore. I... Go on. I need to get away from New Jersey. I want to see some new things and meet different people. You've been talking to your sister again, haven't you, huh? She invited me to go to Venice and spend our birthday together. She paid for a ticket and everything. 
Look, you need to see your sister, you go right ahead. I can't stop you. But if what you really want is a divorce, at least have the courage to say so. Dad and I are having some problems. It happens sometimes to married people. Well, why do people get married? We'll talk about it in the morning. Oh, Dad. No, go on. Go to bed. Night. sort of worked it out all by himself. Oh, that's wonderful. I knew he would. Now, listen, when you arrive, Princess Alessandra's launch will pick you up. Her what? Her launch. It's Venice. The streets are underwater. Sort of like New Jersey, when the sewers back up. <laughs> They'll remind me. <laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Well, I'll see you there. Yeah. Bye. Bon voyage. Bye-bye. Oh, fabulous. Oh, I wish I could go. I'm oh. sorry I have to be in New York. Goodbye, love. Goodbye, Richard. Have a nice trip. At least you'll have Brian with you to keep you company. I will. Do you mean I can go? Mm hmm Thank you, Richard. Enjoy it. Venice! <laughs> What happens if she tumbles onto something important? We'll have to do something about it then, won't we? But I thought she was your lady. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll bring her roses. What you look like. Come on. Hello. Oh, 
Ciao. This is our hostess, the absolutely royal Princess Alessandra. Hello. How do you do? Oh. Champagne. Thank you. But she's so charming. And you even wear the same colors. Uh, welcome to Venice. And this is Brian Foxworth, my right arm, who runs the gallery and tries to run my life. Which certainly is not easy. It's wonderful to meet you. I've heard so much about you. It's awfully nice to meet you, Brian. And it's wonderful to meet a real princess. Oh, <laughs> figurative. Don't be so impressed. Do sit down. I was only a singer in a nightclub when I met my prince under the fountains in Tivoli. From musical notes to bank notes. That's life, my dear. <laughs> this is a magnificent house. It just takes your breath away. Ah, uh, I know. When I dream of being a great actress, I lived in one room near the studios of Cinecittà. So small, I could only cook the short pasta, le penne. Then I married this charming old Italian prince on his last fling. <laughs> I helped him fling it. He's gone. See, si. gone. My poor darling Letcher. Unfortunately, his eyes were bigger than his stomach. But he left me this lovely palazzo. And more later than I can spend in a lifetime. Although I am making an effort. <laughs> oh, next Saturday, I will give the biggest carnival ball for your birthday. Everything will be authentic 16th century. Oh, except for me, of course. <laughs> but you are as young as you feel, I keep telling myself. I will invite every handsome man in Venice. Take your pig, darling. Just leave one. No, make it two. For me. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is carnival. Now, uh, do you want to tell me what's the matter? What do you mean? I mean, do you want to talk about what's bothering you? It's me, remember? I can feel when something's wrong. I don't know, Brady, maybe... Life just didn't turn out the way I thought it would be. Well, what did you think it would be? Maybe I expected too much. Maybe you did. Then we got a note saying that he's sleeping with his students. And you believe it? Oh, he doesn't seem to be interested in me anymore. Do you have any idea who wrote the note? Grant thinks it's one of his students called Rita McMillan. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wish I could fly away with him. Very expensive. Let me buy them for Penny. I want to buy her present anyway. No, Brie, you don't have to do that. I want to. Now, what about Mark? Oh, he'd go crazy for one of these masks. Oh, look at that. Then we'll take it. And now that the children are taken care of, what about their mother? I don't need anything, Brie. Huh? <laughs> Welcome to Italy, Mom. <laughs> I wish I were more like you. Don't envy me, Steph. You don't know anything about my life, really. I don't have very much. You have a husband, children. You don't know how many times I envy you. Look at me. We're twins. And I look like an old shoe compared to you. That's because you don't seem to care anymore. That's all. 
I know. The owner shall not be back. Is there a drinking fountain somewhere around here? What's that? Oh, just a way to get through the day. Really? What? You won't need these anymore. Mr. Frascari and his entire salon are awaiting us. And boy, do they have work to do. Don't oh. argue. Girls. <laughs> Stephanie, what have you done to yourself? Nothing, Brian. I'm Sabrina. <laughs> I non posso crederlo. They are so beautiful. They are so incredible alike. Uh, it, is, it is really, truthfully, impossible <laughs> to tell you apart. What happens, that really could be embarrassing. I mean, if I was in love with a twin. <laughs> <laughs> well, girls, whoever you are, whichever you are, close your eyes, make a wish, and then blow out the candles. Come on, Don't forget the wish. <laughs> <laughs> Will you tell us what you wish for? I wished for health, happiness, and the avoidance of tax. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. That's one, Sabrina. And Stephanie. You are Stephanie, are you not? I certainly am. I wish... I wish this night would never end. I wish no one would ever grow old, and I wish... Oh, I wished I was Sabrina. <laughs> God help you. As your fairy godmother, I grant every one of your wishes. Ah, but be careful, or they may come true. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone choose partners. And in honor of the ancient tradition of the Carnival of Venice, let us see how many of us can wind up with each other without knowing who is behind the mask. It is so much more interesting. Sabrina! Excuse me. The honor of your beauty for the dance, please. Oh, no, I, I'm not a senior. I'm married. This is Venice. Oh, you're afraid of the unknown, huh? Okay.
Nico. Have you got the goods? Ecco lo qui. Prima qualità. One hundred thousand dollars. D'accordo? No, non d'accordo, ma non basta. Oh, that is the deal. Oh, no, ma cosa tu dici? Ma che cro... Ma, ma io non capisco, duecentocinquanta mila dollari tu mi hai detto. Ma cosa fai? Ma... Call you tomorrow, Sabrina? No. Ciao. You had a good time. Uh, oh, no. I had more than just a good time. I had the most wonderful time. The most wonderful time of my life. Woo! Whee! <laughs> and you know what was great about it? I explained to him very carefully that I wasn't you, I was Stephanie. Then a little while later, I said I was really joking, and I really was Sabrina. And you know what he said? He said he didn't care. <laughs> oh, the carnival went on and on, and we danced and danced. It isn't like dancing with your husband. It isn't so much fun. Well, Cinderella, the sun is up, and you better get some rest. We both have planes to catch. Oh, let's miss them. What? I'm having too good a time, Brainy. I don't want to go back to that life yet. I think what you've had is too much wine. I haven't had enough. Oh, Brainy, I don't want to go home yet. Please say I don't have to go home yet. I'm not exactly thrilled to go back to my life, either. Then think of something. You're the one who always came up with the good ideas. Think of something, Brainy. You can do it. You're thinking. Stop it. I know that look. It's just like when we were six years old and you glued us together so we could be Siamese twins. Mother had a fit. <laughs> were you really serious about your birthday wish? Every word of it. You really want to be me? Of course. Have you got an idea? I don't know yet. What would you think? about really becoming me. And you'd become me? Are you serious? Very. Just for one week. To try a different lifestyle. But you couldn't possibly want my way of life. Oh, I don't know. I've always wondered what it would be like to have a real family. You can have London and everything that goes with it. What do you think? Don't you want a little adventure in your life? You're the one who didn't want to go home. What about the children? They like me. 
I've always gotten along with them. And I've been in your house enough times to know your routine. And Grant, well, you said yourself you weren't sleeping together. He's sleeping on the couch. For one week, I should be able to handle him. <laughs> I don't seem to be able to. You know, maybe I could even find out if he's really playing around. Let's do it. You make it all sound so easy. Do you really think I could get away with it? Of course you can. You fooled Princess Alessandra. You even fooled Brian. You can do it. I don't smoke. You'll have to get used to that. I do. And you have to get used to that. <coughs> um, you better fake it. Can you still forge my name? I did on most of your math exams, otherwise you'd be in third grade. <laughs> now, we will have to exchange all kinds of things, like checkbooks and charge cards. And everything. Everything. Do you really think I can run the gallery? You studied as much art as I did in school. The art world is 90% hot air anyway. You can fake that too. I do. Well, what about the business, the details? Don't worry about a thing. Brian handles most of that for me anyway. And he's a darling. You'll love him. Your hair and makeup isn't exactly like mine yet. We'll have to fix that. How will I know your friends? What to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to cancel our plane reservations and leave tomorrow. We'll spend the rest of the day and the whole night comparing notes. Ooh, this is going to be fun. Brainy, how many men are you involved with in London? Only one, seriously. And he's in New York for a whole month. We've got to be very careful about details. Oh, give me your wedding ring. <laughs> I haven't had this off since I was married. Come on. Oh. Oh, Brainy, I love the idea. I really, really do. But I just don't think I can go through with it. Are you crazy? Do you know how many women in the whole world look enough alike to exchange lives? You may be the first housewife in suburbia to make it over the wall. I want to. I really want to. I just don't know if I can do it. This could be the most exciting time of our lives. Don't blow it. Do it. I'm beginning to feel like I'm six years old again. Just imagine. Tomorrow we're going to wake up and be someone else. Oh, I'm so excited. And so scared. <sighs> but mainly excited. <laughs> She doesn't. She looks beautiful. Grant. Hi. I missed you. <laughs> you did. Enough to help me with my luggage. Oh, you guys, I've got a lot of presents for you. How nice to be home in damp old England. These last items mm -hmm. are for commercial use. Sabrina, this gentleman has just ruined my little surprise. And a few knickknacks for the gallery. How lovely that antiques are duty free. Duty free or not, sir. 
You'll have to fill out these forms. What a ball. Do you want me to wait out in the car? No, 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 no. I'll take a taxi. You get along home and get your beauty sleep. Not that you need it. See you in the morning. Why are the English so tedious? In the morning. Mm -hmm. Do you want a taxi, miss? Why have a chauffeur? Blue eyes, moustache. I beg pardon, madam. The name's Geoffrey. Miss Longworth. Welcome home. Roger. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, the Rolls is right outside. Shall I take the long way home? Please. came home this morning. I know exactly how she feels. Nice to be home. Is something wrong, madam? Oh, no. You're not a bit the girl who left here. I'm not. Are you well? You seem awfully pale. I know what it is. It's that Italian food. All uh. tomatoes and and soggy pasta things. No nourishment at all. Now, I've prepared you some lovely English food. Oh. Steak and kidney pudding, jam roly-poly, your favourite. Well, uh... Let me fix you a tray. It'll do you the world of good. Oh, I'm not really very hungry. I insist. On second thought, Mrs. Thurkle, I don't really seem to be very hungry at all. Uh, I don't think I'll eat after all. Well, beg your pardon, madam, but when you come back from the continent, you usually have an appetite like a horse. Must be your stomach. My stomach's fine. You saw the doctor about it last month. Yes, well, he cured me. Doctors never cure you. They keep you at death's door until they get rich or you get bedded, whichever comes first. Are you sure? 